Hello everyone, welcome to Ingram Orchids and More. I'm Catherine and today we're going to be talking about growing orchids indoors. You're probably wondering, Catherine, why are you outside filming this? It's 76 degrees and sunny in South Central Florida today yeah. and I need to be out here. I'm solar powered. I have to enjoy this weather. So that is why I'm out here, but I will be inserting a few clips of the orchids that we grow indoors in our home, um, just to kind of give you ideas because it's fun to see um, how other people grow orchids and it kind of gives you some inspiration. Obviously, a lot of people in this world don't have the privilege of growing orchids in greenhouses um, or even growing your orchids outdoors. Thankfully, we are so fortunate to have an environment where we grow I mean, 98% of our collection outside here in South Central Florida. There's only a few times uh, a year that we have to bring stuff inside because it's so cold. Um, and for those of you who know the Orchid Shuffle, you understand the pain that that is. Uh, but for those of you who have to grow indoors, um, whether you have an apartment, um, you're in a part of the world where it's just not tropical weather and you need to have that. There are ways that you can grow orchids indoors. Is it ideal? No. Uh, but can it work? Yes. So let's talk about a few tips on where you can grow your orchids indoors for it to have the best um, possibility of your plants succeeding growing indoors. So. Um, I do want to disclaim here that I am not a professional at growing orchids indoors, um, neither is Tristan. I will say that we've come a long way with some of the um, plants that we have decided to grow inside. Um, it's It's been a learning curve. Um, it's not for the faint of heart and it's it's a lot of different cultures. Indoors we do grow um, a variety of novelty type Phalaenopsis, so your species um, fails. Um, we do grow um, some Oncidiums and some Cattleyas that just do not like uh, temperatures going below 60 degrees. So that would be like our Cattleya Wallisii, um, also known as El Dorado. Um, we have a few like our White Princess, um, just a very mixed mixed bag of items that we grow indoors. Um, we have them in our stairwell um, on a glass shelf with grow lights um, right above it and they are just the grow light bulbs that screw into the ceiling. For those of you that are growing indoors and you're just starting this process and you're asking the question like where do I put these plants in my home? Well first of all you need to ask yourself a question. Are you able to manipulate the natural light that you have with windows? If the answer is yes, um, you want to look for a south or eastern facing windows. Those are your top two choices in terms of natural light. Um, north facing windows tend to be a little bit too dark and in moments like that, um, your leaves on your orchids are going to show a darker green color. Um, overall, your plant may be doing well, but you might not ever see that plant bloom. Um, a lot of times people ask us questions, you know, why is my orchid not blooming? And it could be a variety of things, but the top two reasons are it's not getting enough light or you're not fertilizing enough. Um, so that's typically the first two reasons um, why. And western facing windows, get a little too hot in the afternoon time um, so you can run the risk of burning your orchids and burning the leaves and you really don't want that either it is it is a factor that can happen in any window obviously with any changes in the movement of the plant um, the glass can kind of magnify or i should say intensify the light um, and you just need to, to be watching your plan and seeing how it's adjusting to being in front of a window. Um, just like you would be growing a plant outside. If you try to acclimate it too quickly, um, you, can, you can burn the leaves. And it's not to say that sunburn can kill a plant, it's just going to look really ugly for a while. And anytime you have a burn, it can introduce 
um, the opportunity of an infection or anything like that. So you just want to be careful, be patient, slow and steady wins the race. Like I said before, south and eastern facing windows are going to be your best option um, if you are trying to utilize the natural light that you have in your home. If natural light is not a possibility, there are options where you can use artificial lighting such as grow lights. Um, and let me tell you the difference with this. The lighting requirements for utilizing the natural light from your windows in your home is typically six plus hours of the day. You want to kind of mimic the daylight hours, the growing hours in that sense. Um, if you are utilizing artificial lights, such as grow lights in your home, you want to have those lights on 14 to 16 hours a day on average. And you can set these to a timer just so you don't forget to turn them on and turn them off. Um, having the grow lights on a little bit longer than your standard daylight time um, is better in a sense because your plants are going to think, oh, the days are longer. I'm going to put out more growth. This is great. We need to work on sheaths and buds and all that good stuff. If for some reason you can't, you're not getting enough light requirements from the natural light sources and you decide it's time to get grow lights. Um, my best recommendation is do your research on what's going to work best for your space and your home. Go to Home Depot or Lowe's um, or a hardware store. Whatever's more convenient for you. The brands that Tristan and I recommend are GE and Feet. F-E-I-T lights and they are LED bulbs and you want to make sure that they're full spectrum when you're shopping. Um, so LED and full spectrum. We utilize the ones that just screw into the light sockets, the light fixtures in our home. Um, and we have used more of the string light, grow light environment and put them on a uh, black baker's rack. Um, so the light can filter through those shelves if you are needing space to go vertically as opposed to horizontally. Um, so either options work there. Um, we don't grow a lot using these grow lights, um, but we have used them in the past when Tristan and I um, are flasking. So the grow lights help a lot when you're trying to intensify those light uh, patterns. Typically the types of orchids that are gonna do best um, with the grow lights, with that 14 to 16 hour time window, um, your Phalaenopsis, um, your slipper orchids, so the Paphiopetalums and Phragmopediums, um, some Cattleyas um, can do well in, in that time constraint. However, when you have plants such as Vandas or Cymbidiums that require a lot more intensely lit conditions, um, it may not do well. Um, I'm just gonna preface with that. There are a lot of people who successfully grow Vandas indoors, but it's not ideal and it's very hard and they're not, you know, just starting out in this journey. So research your plants, see what the lighting requirements need and see if other people have success growing these different types of varieties indoors. Um, so we've talked about light. We've talked about natural light and we've talked about artificial light. So let's say you've picked your window. You've picked your area where you have your grow lights and you have your space. The biggest tips that I can give for growing orchids indoors is watering. So it's gonna be drastically different than growing outdoors and you really need to be in tune with your watering habits and um, your plants water requirements. So by saying that, there's a lot of factors that are involved with watering indoors. So your potting media is gonna be super important um, when you are growing indoors. You wanna ensure that you have your plants in a pot that has drainage. Um, that is the number one way to kill an orchid is overwatering or having it sit in water that's stagnant 
and there's no drainage. It's just a recipe for disaster. So pick a potting media that is well draining. So examples of this can be a bark mixture. You can use um, shredded tree fern. You can use sphagnum moss. Um, the thing is with sphagnum moss though, is you really need to know and time it on how long it's gonna take for that sphagnum moss to dry out once you water it. Um, you're gonna know your home and your home's humidity um, better than anyone else. So it's better to kind of forget about them in a sense for a little bit than trying to overwater. Um, a lot of problems with sphagnum moss is the top of the pot where the sphagnum is will be dry and you'll go down and touch um, the bottom of the potting media and it's still going to be soppy wet. So a lot of people are going to think, oh, well just because the top's dry, it's time to water. And then you're growing Phalaenopsis indoors and you go to water and you end up having, you know, that bacterial soft rot going on. And we do not want that. So. A lot of people will tell you a certain amount of days to go in between waterings and I can't confidently give you that advice because everyone's home is different. Everyone has different lighting requirements. Everyone has different um, humidity in their homes and I don't know what your watering habits are like. So my best recommendation is you need to feel the potting media and if you have a well draining pot um, that has drainage on the bottom, you're gonna be able to kinda touch the bottom of the pot and feel that, that media that's at the very base and see if it's dry. I would rather my plant be a little thirsty than overwatering and introducing any, any rot issues. So speaking of rot, that leads me to my next point about air movement. Air movement is super important when you're growing indoors. So I recommend that you have a fan um, if your room does not have, let's say, a ceiling fan above um, to move a whole bunch of air, um, you need to get a little fan to blow in the direction of your plant collection. Um, having circulating air movement is going to help dry your plants out and make sure that there's no standing water and they, they're naturally going to have some airflow in nature, so you want to make sure that nothing is stagnant. The next thing is you want to monitor the humidity when you're growing indoors. So typically and ideally 50% or more humidity is preferred for orchids when you're growing indoors. Now homes tend to be less humid than that growing outside. Um, here in Florida I swear you, you're walking outside in water. I will take a shower and I come out and I'm already ready for another one. So definitely different and in different parts of the world it's very dry so if you have less humidity stuff is gonna dry out faster and if you're having air movement stuff is gonna dry out even more so if you're using potting media like like bark mix um, as opposed to sphagnum moss your bark mix is gonna dry out a heck of a lot faster than something that's more moisture retentive like shredded tree fern and sphagnum moss so Know what your watering habits are and pick your potting media accordingly and know when your plant fully dries out so you know when it's time to water again. Uh, because if stuff is still damp, you may not want to water until it's completely dry. Um, so there is that delicate balance there. But circling back to the 50% or more humidity that orchids ideally require, um, Sometimes it's hard to achieve that when you're growing indoors because it is a drier environment. And when you're growing plants inside your home, um, you wanna just grow plants. You don't wanna grow mold. So it is a, is a sticky subject in terms of that. So a lot of people will use humidifiers in their room that they're growing their orchids in. And that's, that's okay. You just wanna make sure that it's not so humid that you're growing you know, mold in your home. And I would hate for that to happen. So don't be like, well, Catherine told me to get a humidifier, make my house as humid as possible. No, that's not, that's not what I'm saying. Um, if you can't use a humidifier and you're wanting to control the humidity level in your home, um, a lot of people have successfully taken, you know, plant saucers 
and filled them with like river stones or any types of rocks and just putting a little bit of liquid at the bottom and sticking your plant on top can help with the humidity levels. So um, there are a lot of ideas. People get very creative when growing plants indoors. So. Fine tune what's gonna work best for you. Humidifiers are relatively inexpensive. Um, we don't have a humidifier for our growing environment indoors um, just because Florida tends to be so humid on its own anyway. Um, we're already at 50-60% humidity in our home. So we have dehumidifiers to kind of help with that. Um, that is my, my tips and tricks for growing orchids indoors. Um, it takes practice. It really, really does. And are you going to get it right the first time? Who knows? If you do, that's phenomenal. I'm proud of you. But it took us a long time to to get it right, especially with, with Phalaenopsis growing indoors. Um, they don't have success outdoors, so we tried moving them indoors and noticed that, oh, we're getting new leaves, we're getting new roots. Like, you just start seeing where their happy places are in the house. It's, it's a challenge, but once you know where the best place to grow your orchids are in your home, you're gonna start seeing progress. You're gonna start seeing little, little, leaves shooting out you're going to start seeing spikes you're going to be excited your plant is going to tell you when it's in that happy spot so always stay encouraged and research what your orchid needs um, and and learn about and learn about your lighting in your home and see what's going to work best because just because you may have a, a regular house plant that does well it may not be the same conditions that a phalaenopsis might need so always, always, always research culture and have an idea of what you have before going into it. That's all the tips that I have that have helped me and Tristan improve our, our growing environment indoors. Um, and that's kind of how to grow orchids indoors. Obviously we grow a lot of our stuff outside, um, but we have a few things indoors and this is why YouTube is such a great community because people get to share what works for them. So if you successfully grow orchids indoors and you want to help others, comment down below what has helped you. What is your best practices? What helps you? What are things that didn't work? Um, share that in the comments below. I would love to hear from you. and. That's why this community is so great. Reading comments, you get to see what works for others and it might save you some time as well too. So comment what didn't work for you. It's always good to know about, about the pros and the cons and we're in this together, we're learning together and it's okay to say that you don't know it all. I don't know it all. Um, I'm still learning every day when it comes to this this hobby and um, it's, it's wonderful learning from others and seeing what works for them. And sometimes if it works for someone and it doesn't for you, that's okay too. You're gonna learn what works best for your plants in your growing environment. So thank you so much for watching. I appreciate you all tuning in and learning a little bit on how to grow orchids indoors. If you like this content, please go ahead and give this a thumbs up and leave a comment down below showing your support and hit that subscribe button if you haven't already. Appreciate you guys and we'll see you in the next one. Thanks so much, bye.